going to um, do a quick room logistics. There's a couple people standing, and so I'm going to throw three chairs right here if you guys want to come forward. Um, and my next question is going to come up. We also have, actually, Carol Ross Ham. I'm going to announce her at the, at the have her speak at the very end, but she is our sustainability manager here at Northeastern. Do you want to sit or? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyone else come in? So we're gonna we're gonna chat with her uh, for the last couple of minutes of the program. So I think we've got a really good overview here, and I know there's got to be some burning questions. I have like five or ten more questions that I could ask, but I want to turn it over to you to see where you're at. Um, what are your thoughts? Do you have something specific you'd like to throw out to one of our panelists? I have a question for the audience. Oh, let's reverse. Okay. Uh, do do we have any engineers or people in the technical fields here? Okay. Okay. Do the, any of those engineers have a question? <laughs> Who's got a question? Uh, Andrew, how, if you have any inkling, uh, how close we are to being able to uh, save the energy we get from solar, like store it? Store it. There are a few people working on some uh, battery technologies. So um, like you companies on your due diligence work? Uh, I, first of all, I couldn't tell you. If, if I knew, if it's, I couldn't tell you because that's like the big non-disclosure agreement. <laughs> don't say anything. Uh, there are companies working on it. Um, the, I would say that, and I'll, 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 let me put my time on so I don't yap for too long. <laughs> I will say this much about people in technical fields solving these kinds of problems. Look at what you're trying to solve. Um, everybody take a look in the back of this room right there. There's a thermostat on the wall. That thermostat is 40 years old. It is not on a timer. It probably wastes more energy. You could put solar panels on this roof. You'd get more bang for your buck by swapping out every one of those thermostats for or hooking up to the internet. You can do all sorts of cool stuff rather than making solar panels. So, I mean, your question is, is are there companies doing energy storage? Yeah. But you know what? You might get a better bang for your buck rather than storing it just by not using it in the first place. So, I mean, if there are companies, if you want, you can chat afterwards. So... Uh, I just had a question for Karen. It sounds like you've kind of worked around the world. <clears throat> Being an international affairs major myself, I kind of see myself going abroad. But how do you feel about um, the acceptance of like sustainable work in other countries compared to how you work in the U.S.? It's an excellent question. I actually think, in a lot of ways, some of our other countries are ahead of where we are here. Um, I'm, I'm more directed towards like third world countries. So right. Not so. Even, not even so that's fine. So if I even go back to, but but I think we have to. It's it's completely different scale. So for example, if we look at, I was just in China in May for a World Green Roof Conference, and uh, in Shanghai already, um, parts of the city are subsidizing green roofs to the level of seventy-five to one hundred percent. So seventy-five percent if it's on um, um, apartment complexes and high-end hotels, and 100% if it's in schools and hospitals. And so they're already starting to get green roofs right across the city. Um, China is very, very aware about um, climate change. And even though they are a major um, manufacturer and there are a lot of things that they're doing that are creating pollution, they're also aware that they have to do something about it, even just for their own population. Um, Shanghai, I don't know if anybody is aware, is actually in the process of sinking far more rapidly than is ever um, put in our statistics. So they have a major, and it's because the groundwater is going down. So you have a city with 20 million people in it that's on the brink of, you know, are they going to be able to remain sustainable? So they are already looking at these things. And the government of China, when you compare that to the government of India, for example, China is more of an autocratic kind of system because they take charge and they make their policy from the top down. In India, you have 28 states. They're all democracies. They each have their own way of doing and they're each allowed to do a certain amount. So, in fact, they're also facing major water problems. Both are in water crises and we're actually, in, in our case, we're looking at how <laughs> green roofs can help um, uh, maintain our drinking water. So. But right now in India, for example, 18 out of 28 states have rainwater policies to catch the rainwater, um, but the other 10 states are not. Yet there are some similar problems in confronting what's happening with water. So just to show, I mean, each country is different each way. Oh, I forgot to turn my
my phone call. Um, each um, um, country has a different approach. However, on another level, in third world countries, where did my phone go? Excuse me, that's my children. They um, put, I, I can't ever miss their call. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, what happens is, in a third world country, as opposed to our, our um, primary, you know, um, top of the line country where we're, we're not just producers, we're, we're um, if you look at the food web, what would we be considered? Fourth, um, fourth in terms of, right. Um, in these, um, but what I'm saying is, you go to Cote d'Ivoire in, in West Africa, I'll, didn't I turn that off? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. To talk, to talk okay. briefly on the, on the food also, um, on, on food, and, but it, also looking at our, our society, and, and, you know, specifically, we're looking at ways to conserve, to save energy, save water, sa you know, to make things more efficient and to go back to ways that we were before. So if you actually look at these more developing countries, um, I have a friend who volunteered in Tanzania for three weeks in an orphanage, and she was in really enjoying all the food there and one day the, her you know her her lunch was brought out and she said she said to the chef she said no more avocados he said no they're not in season anymore they're doing exactly what we're what I'm trying to do right here in Boston and in New England which is get back to a local food economy and get people eating things in season you know so so they're actually already living that so what it what there is though to to talk to that to your major is there's actually a lot of opportunity in there's a lot more opportunity even in building sustainable systems where the systems don't exist rather than trying to retrofit the existing systems and get these systems back to a sustainable level there's huge opportunity to, to maintain sustainability in those communities which actually combines in so for example in the marketplace at the end of the market everything is composted and the big snails <laughs> come in and they're going to eat it and regenerate it um, um, Everything, almost everything is automatically recycled. People don't have that much money or the resources. Everybody automatically has a big shopping bag when they come to the market or a cart or something because they're not going. However, what is also happening is there's pressure from all of their, all of their students that have now gone out of the country to study abroad in France or in the U.S. or the Western places, come back with their four or five years experience or ten years experience and want to start to develop their country with it. So what they're actually um, having as a, it's the same in India, it's the same everywhere, is what they had which was good, which we're trying to bring back, they actually saw as sort of, not evil, but it's not Western and modern. So they want to, mo how do, so now it's a question of how do we help them understand that many of the things they were doing just automatically were, were, were good and they don't necessarily have to um, create the development that we created here. However, how do you make those worlds meet? How do we help them get to a point that, or how do we work as a, as a global economy to make sure that everyone's getting sort of a piece of the pie, feeling a comfortable life, they shouldn't be living in misery, but yet at the same time we should be able to understand their systems and our systems and how they can work together. That's so I'm going to bring it back to a few more questions, and bring, and and also, um, we'll try and think also about think about your careers. What do you want to know that maybe from their path might help you make some decisions, or what advice might you be looking for? Uh, Trisha, I just have a clarifying question. Earlier, you said that um, that subsidy of four dollars and fifty cents per square foot was available in New York or somewhere in the city. What what is the full cost of a square foot? So it depends on how large a space you're developing. So if a green roof is on 10,000 square feet or more in, on the commercial application, it can be, it could get as low as seven to eight dollars per square foot for the um, green roof part of the assembly, um, not including the waterproofing. Otherwise, um, for a place like New York City, most of them are probably the rooms are less than 5,000 square feet. So you're probably looking at minimum somewhere between 10 and 15 dollars a square foot, and then upwards of that for some of these, you know, um, higher end uh, installations, they'll go for 20 to 40 dollars a square. Foot. 